Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today I plan on sharing an overwhelming story about a Christian missionary who is a doctor of psychology and his phenomenal journey towards Islam. I'm talking about Dr. Gerald F. Dirks. Born into a Christian family in America, Dr. Dirks used to be a regular attendee in churches and the associated social events. He was a keen learner right from a young age, memorizing verses from the Bible. He and his family were active worshippers. By the time he entered high school, he had developed an interest in ministry. In pursuit of this interest, he actively participated in church-related events and volunteered at nursing homes. He also served as a district officer and a regular preacher, where he drew ample attention. By the age of 17, Dr. Dirks enrolled into the prestigious Harvard College, where he studied comparative religion for a short time and found the apparent similarities between Islam and Christianity intriguing. Later, he acquired his master's degree in divinity from Harvard Divinity School in 1974. In the summer, Dr. Dirk served as a minister in various churches, bringing in large crowds to the Sunday morning worship services. He got a master's and a doctorate in clinical psychology and worked as a mental health professional, specializing in ministry. However, despite his busy life, Dr. Dirk never found himself disconnected from his religious obligations and duties. He was a frequent worshipper and a man of ethics and morals. As the years passed, Dr. Dirks noticed something alarming. He observed an acute lack of religiousness in the progressive American society. He once stated that the American culture was becoming a morally bankrupt institution. And I must say these were wise words from an equally wise man. It was around that time when Dr. Dirks came across a few Arab Muslim Americans to understand and translate a few ancient Arabic documents about the history of Arabian horses, which he and his wife were researching for a couple of years. Throughout that period, he met a couple of local Muslims. He began to ponder on the Muslim community and their code of conduct in society. Their families were a great example of high morals and values, behavioral ideology, and disciplined mindsets, all of which impacted him in a significant way. His frequent quality meetings and conversations with these new people gave him a deep and genuine insight into Islam and its teachings that left him wondering. Surprisingly, what impressed Dr. Dirks the most was those people's intellectual approach and their unassertive way of conveying their message while keeping it effective. The discussion was never about questioning his personal beliefs and aggressively arguing. Instead, they used to explain things humbly without belittling what he or the others might believe in. Dr. Dirk started to find gratification in the Muslim community rather than the one he was raised in for all these years, which made him question himself and his actions. The questions were prompted by the new aspects of life he had just stumbled upon by observing Islam and its virtues. They are also instilled into its people who showcased far more ethical and virtuous personalities, keeping hold of their spirituality and doing their best to practice the right and avoid the wrong. He began to become weary of the teachings of the Bible, and its overall authenticity, questioning the concept of Jesus and his position as the Son of God. He also studied Hinduism, which made little sense to him. It was a period of peak cognitive restlessness for him, as his past beliefs were contradicting his current self, and he was suffering from a complete lack of conviction. Eventually, his self-questioning culminated to a point where he asked himself what separated him from his Muslim friends and their beliefs. It was this thought that provoked Dr. Dirks to seek actual Islamic knowledge. He began to read books on Islam written by Western scholars, also coming across the Prophet Muhammad wasallam biography. He also read English interpretations of the Holy Quran. Nevertheless, he did not let his friends and peers know at this time of his quest of self-concept, only discussing his doubts with his wife. Soon. Dr. Dirks' internal war came to a halt when he realized there was no noticeable amount of contradiction between his beliefs and Islam's essential attributes. By this time, Dr. Dirks had been in a constant psychological war with himself. It's hard to change what was once an important part of your identity. Conversion to a religion demands a significant amount of courage and affirmation, which Dr. Dirks was still seeking. It was March of 1993, during the holy month of Ramadan, when he found it. During a conversation, Dr. Dirks admitted his belief in one God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that he is a Muslim, not a Christian. Soon after, 
His wife also embraced the beautiful religion of Islam. Today, we are fortunate enough to approach his writings about Islam and his beautiful journey in the quest of Allah, which he wrote in his lifetime, including around 220 articles on Islam, 10 books on understanding Islam and its history, as well as lectures on Islam in America. He is also the author of 140 articles written on Arabian horses and their history, and the co-author of 60 articles published regarding behavioral sciences and related medicines. So that's it for today, folks. I hope that you all found this story as inspiring as I did. Dr. Gerald Dirks sure was an incredible man with an astonishing account. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive his shortcomings and grant him Jannat al-Firdaus, inshallah. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen.